My name is Ivette Jackson. I'm from Jamaica. My nephew and I were sleeping in the same bed. And I felt this person behind me. And I said, what are you doing in here? He said, well, it was raining and he's afraid. So he came to keep our company. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Caribbean Kaleidoscope. As you know, we're a talk show right here on MyKeyTV.com, your Caribbean talent network. This is the platform where we tackle the most controversial topics in the Caribbean that is affecting us and, of course, the entire diaspora. We're tackling the issues of domestic violence and child sexual abuse, and we have some fabulous ladies here with us. Here, first of all, we'll be interviewing Miss Ivette Jackson. Ivette, you have a very, very interesting story about child abuse. Would you please share that with our viewers? When my sister left Jamaica and went to the United States, I was sent to take care of my nephew, which is my sister's son, and his grandfather have him, which is my stepfather. Well, my nephew and I, we sleep in the same bed, because in the island, mother, father, sister, brother, everybody sleep in the same bed. Because you don't have enough. Because That's you don't right, have enough beds. <laughs> we don't have enough beds, <laughs> yes. And so, while my nephew and I were sleeping, I felt someone came in the bed, and it was my stepfather, because there was this sticking, sticking me in my leg, and I didn't know what that sticking was. I do know now. While your nephew was in the bed? While my nephew was in the bed, he was nine years old. A second time he came, and the second time he succeeded. And from that molestation rape, I was impregnated. I didn't know at the time, and abortion was performing me. My stepfather called a family member, a cousin, and she gave me some concoction to drink. So I drank the concoction. And she said, when you go to the bathroom, if your period comes back, let us know. Wow. So Ivette, I'm, I'm very intrigued by your story. And by the way, you all, I, I cannot imagine what, what that, you know, kind of pain can translate to. Ivette, you only kind of remember that so many years later. Why when that incident, or maybe even other incidents has happened, why was not the time when you came forward? I didn't remember. I was um, about 22 and I had a friend, a male friend, and we were watching television and what trigger it was, the newscaster said that there was a family member that was molested by another family member, and that's what triggered it. So bits and pieces come to me over a period of 35, 40 years. Because you blocked it out. I blocked it out. Okay. It was so traumatic. I right. don't know what was going on, because I don't know what sex was. In I don't know psyche, what was happening to me. I don't have a clue. How are you able to overcome it, per se, if, if you have overcome it? How are you able to, like, you know what? This is what it is to get to the point now where you're an advocate to speak against child sexual abuse. I went to my pastor and I told him about it and I got counseling. I was very angry to know that my stepfather, a grown man, molested a, a young 13-year-old child. You all, we really need to do something about sex education in the Caribbean. Yes. We do. Mm -hmm. and, and this was, I know it was just 20 years ago because she looked so far. <laughs> but but I would continue with that, you know, and, and how you dealt with that. But I really just wanted to stop and say that. Just take note of that. Sex education at age 13 was still not known to Ivette. Because in the islands back then, the parents um, assume that if they teach about sex and penis and thing, you'll be feel like you're grown. I think a lot of times because I guess our parents and grandparents, their wisdom or lack of is like, you know what, if I educate my kids about this, they're going to go and do it. Exactly. When you have to empower your kids and unfortunately, unfortunately you have to have trust in the way you're raising them because you know what, I'm going to make sure my kids are aware of it so that way maybe think positive that we're going to prevent them from being in those situations. Well, we all know the different types of abuse. There are three main ones. We have intrafamilial, which is as we just spoke about, that's the one that happened to you. Mm -hmm. We have non-family that takes place outside of the home. Mm -hmm. We are familiar with that one as well. Mm -hmm. But there's one that we would just love to tackle at this point. It's called transactional sex 
abuse transactional if you think about the term transactional sex abuse this is where in the case of sex with a minor sex is exchanged for money goods or favor all right does that sound familiar at all okay so if I'm, as i said we're familiar with the first two but let's talk about this transactional sex abuse how many of us of course grew up in the caribbean where um, we remember there being a big man, um, a big man in the in the community. He has a flashy car. He's picking up girls in his car, etc. But the truth is, we really don't look at him or that mm -hmm. whole thing as sexual abuse or child sexual abuse. We a lot of times just think she liked big man or they like to deal with man or they <laughs> like grown up man or they right. like big thing they hot, you know they're too fast that's right they're, they're hot fast. they're hot they're too fast yeah i haven't heard mm -hmm. that one in a while but mm -hmm. you're right they're too fast but really again that had to be cultier because if you think about it that is transactional sex abuse mm -hmm. this is commonplace in the caribbean what do you guys think about that Think about it seriously. We all, and I remember growing up around it in the Caribbean, in, in our community. There were the younger ones who somehow they probably developed a little faster, etc. The predation by the big man, the big uncle, or everything that come with a fancy car and the money, they knew how to take set on that the hot girl. You know what I mean? Then it's kind of like, you know what? She deserve it. She too fat, she too hot. Look what she's wearing. That's right. That's what you, you know, hear. She shouldn't be wearing that, that's so she asked for it. And you just think they're bad. That's they, they're bad. Look at that bad girl. Yes. Bad girl. And that's I'm remembering yeah. so many growing up. As I said, that's yes. the bad girl. You know, yes. and nobody stopped to think that it was child sexual abuse. Talk to us about this. This it's, is culture we're talking. Yes, and it's still happening now. Okay, here's the thing that I hear now. Well, I watched I do it for free. I'm doing yeah. it for free. This time I get a purse. I get these right. clothes, I get to go to these right. restaurants now. Right. So now I'm not doing it for free anymore. That's right. Flash, um, mm -hmm. from a male's perspective, okay. let's talk about this sexual abuse here. Okay. Um, because I think there's a bit of a double standard. How do you feel about that? Meaning, when it's done from a man to a woman, it's considered, oh my goodness, right. it's abuse. But when it's done from a woman to a younger man or even a young boy, mm -hmm. we do have some issues. It is a double standard. Abuse is abuse, you know, regardless of the gender. Um, I think, like I said, because of our culture and being men, stereotypically, you can't be a punk. You do have to, like, suck it up or, you know, what you're crying about. Or it can be seen as where you're lucky. So give us your take on that whole issue of men or women doing that to, to boys. You know, I went to Canada and I, um, it's a pastor and he was molested by his mother. It's a man, he was, four, he was 10, and he was molested until he was about 17 years old. So I would encourage mother to speak to their sons, and I would encourage sons to speak to their mother too, because men are being molested. When I did research on molestation in the Caribbean island, you know, it's a shame, but Jamaica carried the highest incest rate of all the Caribbean islands. I know you're from Jamaica and everything. I know you keep saying that. It's not just an issue in Jamaica. No. In Belize, it's a very big, big problem. I think the in last Belize, couple of years. In Belize, that's why I say we, we need have, it in everywhere. We everywhere. have a real bad epidemic where you're having stepfathers, uncles impregnating ah. 13, 12 year old girls. Yes. Yeah. And the thing is, just because they want to be the first to get that cherry. Can so it is a big problem. So Sick. I just want to say, it's not just a Jamaica issue. No. You know, it's just the fact that, you know, our special guest, that's where she's from. So she's talking what she knows. But it's not just a Jamaica thing. It's a Caribbean thing. Oh, and it covers Caribbean. a whole diaspora. So it's not only there. It's only that, you know, Belize is a very big and bad, unfortunate Yo, I think itself. we should just start naming all the countries coming down in the Caribbean because <laughs> yes. it affects everybody. So now that we know that, let's talk solutions. Mm -hmm. How in heaven's name are we going to stop this? How are we going to stop? What are the solutions? What can we offer my <laughs> You got to educate your kids, boys and girls. Not only girls, boys and girls. You got to educate them. Besides that, how do we deal with some of these men? Because again, because it's a cultural issue, I tend to think that our laws are there, <laughs> but they're lax in dealing with these gentlemen or even these <laughs> ladies. Remember, the laws are there to deal with them. Mm -hmm. But again, because of culture, they kind of allow to get away with it. What the citizens need to do is take a more aggressive approach and challenge all of our people as in policy and government to really, like you were talking about, stop be so lax about it and enforce these issues. But they're not going to enforce the issues if you, the people, don't stand up and make them enforce it. If you're still quiet at home, you're keeping it under the rug, 
Granny's not saying nothing. Mommy's not saying nothing. Why should a politician say wow. something? Because if you don't make it really important. Doing research for this, it was very mm -hmm. difficult to yes. find out the Caribbean perspective on child sexual abuse because it's like, well, the problem exists, but maybe not. Let's really take a serious look at this and deal with it more seriously. Do mm -hmm. not allow the big man or the big boy or the sugar daddy to get away with the things that we allow them to get away with because we're creating or we're just propagating a monster. We need to, as a community, step up to the plate and say, we're going to take responsibility for this and not just blame everything on these young boys or young girls. So before we do close it out, just one more. How does the abused deal with it? You gotta tell somebody, you've been holding it in, you lock it up and you're, you're numb. You gotta tell somebody. You gotta tell somebody about it and get some counseling. I even encourage the mothers, even though they're 80 year old, I encourage them to tell their daughters because, because the mother didn't tell the daughter, it becomes a, 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 like a generational curse and mother molested, daughter molested and now the grandchild is being molested. That's why you must share and you must tell your children what happened to you. I would like to leave you, my key TV family, with some sobering statistics. A recent study commissioned by UNICEF, that is the United Nations Children's Fund, and conducted in the Eastern Caribbean, so right there in the Caribbean, it shows that there is a possibility of as many as 45% of people who've been affected by child abuse. Just now, let's stop and take that statistic in. 45%. Mm -hmm. Y'all, that is almost half of us. Mm -hmm. That is almost half. In fact, right now, if you're sitting next to someone mm -hmm. watching this, look left, look right. The possibility is mm -hmm. that that person may have suffered from child sexual abuse. That is how high this is. Flash, mm -hmm. Ivette, you're with just the most amazing company right here on set. Thank I'm you honored. so much. I am honored. I'm honored. I am honored, Miss Ivette Jackson author extraordinaire and so much more thank you so much for sharing your story so passionately so heartfelt you know so warmly with the mikey tv family so we're going to take a break but do not touch that dial but in this case don't touch that mouse at all <laughs> <laughs> don't touch it we will be right back miss jackson's not going anywhere right she, no she cool, isn't in cool. fact she all is right. not going anywhere right. she'll be back later on in the segment <laughs> but we're going to take a short break and we're coming right back with someone who has dealt with that next serious issue of domestic violence. As I said, we hit the heart of the matter right here on Caribbean Kaleidoscope, mykeytv.com, Caribbean Talent Network. Keep it right there, don't touch that mouse. We're coming back. We're going to end it out right here with an excerpt from the fabulous Miss Jackson. She has written two books. It's called The Journey, and she also has a second one, which is a follow-up novel, so you need to get it. A rage swell up within me at the sight of my stepfather. I flip his picture over, even though I was at my sister's house. I didn't know why I did, but I kept hearing in my mind, my grandfather raped me. A lot of people when they're in domestic violence, they're crying out for help. The first day we land on American soil, the abuse starts. What are some of the early warning signs of domestic violence? Believe me, when you get your power, you're going to realize you own that. Do you think they have some kind of accountability or responsibility in how they choose their mate? You don't have to stay in that relationship to get your green card. As we say back home in the Caribbean, what in missing pass? Yeah. 